What up, everybody? What up, everybody? Let me get to the spot. Let me get to the spot. Oh, hey, everybody. This is Plan Your Greatness, and I am your gracious host, Carlton Hamilton. See my shirt? These things take time, and they sure do. This is an appropriate shirt for what we're going to talk about today. We are starting the series. This is the Plan Your Greatness series of leadership principles that I learned in prison. Now, just give you a little context. If you haven't followed my my um, my my channel, I'm gonna get you up to speed as far as what I was doing in there and and the first principle we're gonna talk about because this one is actually gonna talk about be motivated. That's the first principle of leadership anywhere, where it's in prison or if it's with a sports team or it's with a corporate corporate team. Be motivated. But I I gotta give you a little bit of background with that. Okay, when I was in prison, I got a job as the recreational yard assistant. Now, the reason why I chose that job as opposed to all the other jobs, and it only paid 35 cents. Now, yes, 35 cents an hour. There were other jobs that paid up to a dollar an hour. Now, a dollar an hour, that's a lot of money in prison because you're, you're limited as far as what you're going to do, but it had restrictions to it. So what I saw with the recreation job and why I wanted that job so badly was that the thing that I valued most was access and freedom. Because once I got the once I uh, applied for the job and got the job, it allowed me to be out of my cell from seven o'clock in the morning till about 1030 in the morning, three and a half hours where I was I was out there. And then I came back in, showered ate lunch, and then I was back outside about 12.30 and from 12.30 to 3. That's equivalent like to somebody's work day. And then I was back in my cell. I was taking college courses. So I was showering again, take the college courses. Then I would be studying the rest of the night. So it was very similar to a combination of a, of a college student who was working full time at the same time. All right. Because I took the college courses through the TV. All right. So what was interesting that the jobs that paid a dollar an hour were they were making tables, desks and large furniture for school district. And this was so like mind blowing is that I remember looking at a purchase order. There was a piece of paper sitting on top of a big, huge either conference room desk or like an administrative's a conference room table or an administrator's desk. And I saw on it that it was going to a particular teacher's name in the Tempe school district out here in outside of Phoenix, Arizona. And I saw the actual teacher's name that had placed the order and I knew her. And I said, wow, that person is changing people's lives out there. And here I am, you know, assisting in making tables in, uh, in jail in prison. All right. That was toward the end. I actually took that job later on so I could make a little bit more money. But in the midst of where all the leadership information and the skills and all the things came about, they were when I was on the recreation yard. OK, now, one of the things that I that I will maybe even talk later on about was actually a vision that I had. I told my cellmate before I got the job, I said, Nate, I said, I'm going to get the job as a recreational assistant. I'm going to be able to be out all day. But I said, I'm going to convince the supervisor to let allow me to have control, very a lot of a lot of control and responsibility over the recreation yard, so I can start implementing creating the programs that were there. Because I was I was working at a job that paid about ten cent an hour, but I knew the the, the su supervisor was going to be coming out of her office and walking to the rec field. So I caught her one day, dropped my rake, and went and talked to her and told her, Hey, how you doing? My name is Carlton Hamilton. I've worked with sports teams and all the other stuff and, and youth programs. I know how to put together and I could really help your program. And I, I tell she was looking at me thinking I was either going to attack her or something. But all I did was put the seed in her mind, wrote her a letter afterwards, and then I ended up getting hired for the position. Now, here's what's interesting is that I got into prison at about 19, like the summer of 1996, which the Olympics were going on. And hold on a second. Where's, where's my other sheet of paper? Uh, right here. Right here. Okay. The programs that I actually put together while I was in there, I did Olympic events. There was 
when I looked at the program, the, the equipment that she had in her office, I noticed that there were certain things that were in there. So I utilized those things as in my vision of what I was going to do with the program. And the first one was the Olympics. And there were there was a shot put in there. So we had a shot put event. There was chalk. So I made some lines and we ended up having the 50 yard dash, the 100 yard dash. And then there were softballs in there, so we had a softball throw. And then we, with the chalk, I lined this, this, the, around the softball field, measured it in, in the feet, and I said, okay, if we make so many laps around here, that's going to equate a mile. So we had a, a race, and then, not, not necessarily a race, but each individual could run the race, and then we would time everybody, and then whoever had the fastest time, they would, they would win an award, whether it was, I think, a, a 12-pack of soda or a six-pack of soda or three. All right, so... There was Olympics. I did volleyball, like a three-on-three -three volleyball competition. There was physical fitness, like how many push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups you could do in a minute. We had uh, referees and all the other stuff, or, or just monitors. There was a basketball league I put together. There was a fast-pitch softball league. Now, I did all, the, did all that stuff mainly because I was super competitive. But I also knew that as I was competing with everyone else, it was allowing other inmates to to really stretch themselves to really show that they were maybe physically gifted and within all those leagues that i put together i needed help i needed people chalking lines i needed people keeping stats i needed people uh helping bring out equipment i needed umpires i needed referees i needed all these other people and i knew this was in my vision because i had done this before so i got a lot of cooperation from inmates who people were saying were in unmotivated, hopeless, incorrigible. And here I am getting these guys to do things that I was that I was asking them to do that probably in their prior life before they came in here, they, they weren't doing it. So goes back to the first the first rule that, that I have as far as leadership, whether you're in, in prison or out in the streets or with, with coaching teams, that is be motivated. You must be motivated. Now when I wake up now, I do a little bit of meditation, maybe about 10 minutes. And then right after that meditation, I, um, I turn on some music, hook it up to my speaker, and it's blaring. And I'm, I'm hearing this motivational talk from somebody, whether it's Les Brown or Willie Jolly or Eric Thomas or Jim Rome or Anthony Robbins or uh, Graziani, the one guy, or if it's Grant Cardone, it doesn't matter who it is. I need to have somebody just, you know, let me know that this is going to be a great day. You're inspired. You can do anything you want. Now, when I was in prison, I did the same thing, but I didn't go so much into guided meditation. But what I'm making the connection here is each day I started out with very positive uh, things that I'll say about the day. Now, in prison, what I did was I was very thankful for waking up and waking up in good health. Because I saw a lot of stuff going on up in there and I saw there were people that didn't wake up. Somewhere, somewhere along the way, there maybe was a hit put in or something and that doors open. Three or four people ran in the room with knives or shanks, stabbed the guy. The guy didn't even wake up. So every time I woke up, I looked around and I said, I got another day. Now I'm going to make this a day. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be super duper motivated. All right. And the reason and the other reason by is that if I'm motivated, then what it does, it eliminates you from looking at me and saying, now I'm an excuse for you to be in a bad mood. Now, if we're talking about inmates or we're talking about athletes or we're talking about people in corporate America, I don't want to be the reason that you say that you either are going to go through this drill um, in a bad mood or you're going to go through this meeting in a bad mood. Or you're just going to be in a bad mood here in, in prison and then just, I don't know, take it out on other people. You see what I'm saying? Because then what that does is that gives you the momentum to say from it's a, either a drill or a meeting or just your day in prison. That's going to turn into an entire practice. That's going to turn into a tired day or that's going to turn into an entire cycle that you, you know, as far as a sales cycle can't have that. So me as the leader, I'm going to make sure that you are never going to be able to look at me and say, ah, look at you. You're slacking off. You're unmotivated. 
I'm going to be unmo unmotivated too. Because here's what's interesting about that. Psychology will tell you this, that most of the time we will try to mirror somebody else's mood. And if that person has a really enthusiastic mood, we may not like it, but we're going to raise our mood because we're trying to match that other person. OK, now on the flip side, a lot of times people get in our space and they're really down and then we'll try to mirror their their mood because we want to be on their level. So I'm always telling myself, I want to make sure that my level is here so that you're trying to mirror this. And if you don't want to mirror this, then miss me with the rest of it. OK, so this is the first this is the first one. Be motivated. That's the first rule of leadership in prison. And I believe in anything else. Be motivated. So this is plan your greatness. And I will say this again, plan your greatness. You know why? Because no one else will. I'll see you in the next time.